In Barrel is the latest example of a powerful storm that knocked out power to millions of Texans. In fact, Texas had 210 weather-related power outages from 2000 to 2023, according to an analysis by the nonprofit Climate Central. That's more than any other state. So why do these mass power outages keep happening, and what's it going to take to fix it? Let's bring in Beth Garza now. She's a senior energy fellow with the R Street Institute. She also previously served as the director of the Electric Reliability Council of Texas Independent Market Monitor. Beth, nice to see you. Welcome back to the program. Thank you, Karina. Good to see you. Uh, is the failure of the Texas, or I mean, is this a failure of the Texas grid, or is this more about individual companies responsible for power lines and, and wires? I, I, it's hard to say. I'm, you know, Centerpoint, uh, who serves the Houston area, is has got a challenging service territory to maintain reliability of. Uh, on the Gulf Coast, serving millions of, of customers, consu residential consumers, and a very, very large industrial load base as well. So um, they have a very challenging job, challenged by you know, increasing weather, um, severity of weather that they they have to deal with. And on top of that, frankly, some of the infrastructure is aging, right? Yeah. Um, those wood poles that get snapped in 90 mile an hour winds, those are likely to not be brand new poles. Those are yeah. likely to have had some age on them. Um, and so questions about ongoing and continual investment and maintenance of systems are, I'm sure are, are questions that that Centerpoint will have to uh, be answering here in the near future. Well I mean given what you're saying about all of that I mean where what about the, where the focus should be I mean lawmakers have really focused on power generation I mean should there be more of a focus on things like power lines and, and poles? I, I would say yes. Um, the you know the typical consumers uh, likely if they are without electricity, more than ten times it's more than ten times likely that that outage is due to a failure on the small poles and wires that are connected you know within a mile of their house, and it that's what we would call the distribution system. It is ubiquitous. Um, so ubiquitous, people tend to not notice it. You know, it's just down every street or, or transformers on every corner. Um, however, we do notice it when the utility tries to come through and trim trees to maintain clearance away from those lines. And <coughs> excuse me. And as we've seen, you know, in the winter storm here in Austin. You know, the tremendous damage that um, the loss of that uh, of that vegetation of those trees um, did to the system itself. So yeah. that's another area that requires ongoing investment and maintenance and expenditures to make sure that we all have reliable service. Yeah, I mean, you're mentioning this. This is going to take money. I mean, what about the cost of this? I mean, more from the state, more from customers. What are we talking in terms of? what's needed to be invested to be successful. Uh, you know, one of the one place I would look for, uh, you know, to help answer that question would be some investments that have been made in the state of Florida. Um, state of Florida, a long skinny state that with hurricanes buffet, buffeting it on all sides, lots of people living within um, short distances from that coastline. Um, and over the past, it's at least a decade, um, Florida, the Florida, major Florida utilities and the state through some legislation have made re increasing requirements and therefore increasing financial commitments to harden that distribution system. And what does that mean? It means replacing those skinny wood poles with bigger, stronger concrete or steel poles, things that aren't going to, you know, materials that aren't going to be uh, as easily affected by high winds. But that costs money. Yeah. And I, I was just looking at some, some numbers earlier today. Um, and I, if I read it right, Florida Power and Light is projecting to spend a billion dollars a year just on that hardening 
for context, their service territory, their customer base is about double the size yeah. of center points. So yeah, I, interesting. It's I mean, not cheap. No, reliability I, comes at a cost. We'll right? see the investments that are potentially made on the state level, and also what it could potentially cost customers. Beth Garza, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome.